Worldwide TV, your first alert station. Action 2 News at 10 starts now. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. It took more than three decades, but dumpster diving helps police solve Green Bay's oldest murder mystery, the death of 22-year-old Lisa Holstead. Construction workers found her body in a marsh area now known as the Ken Yours Nature Area in the summer of 1986. Generations of detectives have worked the case, hoping technology would work in their favor and bring her killer to justice. Now they say DNA from beer cans and a cigarette did just that. Early yesterday morning, police arrested 65-year-old Lou Archie Griffin for her murder, charging him this afternoon with homicide for killing a woman. Investigators say he never knew before that night. While police will still not say exactly how Griffin became a suspect recently. And a first alert update, Sarah Thompson reports it's just as police knew one day they would find. Since August 12, 1986, police have vowed to find Lisa Holstead's killer. We still do not have anyone in custody at this time. Uh, we're continuing on our investigation. Don't feel too comfortable that you got away with it 10, 20 years ago. Given the new technology, we may be knocking at your door real soon. The book is never closed. Um, the investigators will never quit, and uh, that pressure will always be there. And yesterday, that persistence led Green Bay police, alongside other local, state, and federal authorities, to Lou Griffin's home in Racine, where the 65-year-old man was arrested without incident. Detectives interviewed Griffin for hours, who told them he never knew Lisa Holstead, but remembered seeing her on the news. Then eventually told them he may have sexually assaulted her, but denied killing her. But prosecutors believe DNA says exactly the opposite. For years, police had on file unidentified DNA found on Holstead, but it never matched DNA in the national database. Once they developed Griffin as a suspect, even tracing his former addresses to a few miles within the marsh where she was found, they needed his DNA. Court records show an officer from the Racine County Metro Drug Unit was conducting surveillance on Griffin last month and watched him drink from beer cans that he eventually tossed in a dumpster and smoke a cigarette he later tossed on the ground. Investigators collected those, took them to the state crime lab, and three weeks ago learned Griffin's DNA matched the DNA found on Holstead's body. Court records show Griffin admitted to being high on cocaine and drinking the night of the murder. Sarah Thompson reporting there. Court records show Griffin served time in jail since the murder for battery and disorderly conduct with a dangerous weapon. Prosecutors also say Griffin served prison time at Green Bay Correctional for a sexual assault before the murder. All those cases happened before the state required DNA collection that could potentially have led police to Griffin sooner. In court this afternoon, Griffin told uh, prosecutors he's in law school right now. He's being held in jail on a $1 million cash bond. Genetic genealogy, that's what Green Bay police now say they use to solve the 34-year-old murder of Lisa Holstead. As we were first to tell you last week, Green Bay police, along with the FBI, DCI, and Racine County Sheriff's Office, arrested 65-year-old Lou Archie Griffin last Wednesday. When he was charged with Holstead's murder Thursday, prosecutors would only say Griffin had not been on their radar as a suspect until recently, but they wouldn't say how they found him in the first place. In a first alert update today, we are learning how they use genetic testing to trace a family tree back to the man they say killed the 22 year old mother in 1986. That's always been my main motivation is to get answers for the family. And Detective Dave Graff says those answers were lying in genetic genealogy. Think those ancestry tests families take to try to track their heritage. In this case, all police had was DNA they'd collected at the time Holstead was killed, but it didn't match anyone in the national database. They needed a different pool of DNA to compare it to, one that, in this case, traced family members. So Graff sent the suspect DNA to a lab for analysis coming back with a lot of information about the man's heritage that sent him on a new path toward the suspect. We have identified some um, relatives or, you know, not real close relatives, but cl close enough that it's a lot of work um, doing um, the background and, and basically you're doing a family tree in reverse. Graff says he looked at 10 to 15 different family trees, but zoned in on the ones who lived in Wisconsin. He says it didn't take long before that led him to Lou Griffin, who had just gotten out of prison for sexual assault and was living in Green Bay at the time Lisa Holstead was murdered. 
And from there, police enlisted the help of the Racine County Sheriff's Office, FBI and DCI to help find Griffin in Racine and ultimately obtain his DNA from beer cans and a cigarette he tossed outside. Graf says after Griffin's arrest, he has gotten another DNA sample, which he sent in for testing to verify that police do have the right man. So they said they, they used what they called a, a reverse family tree and started kind of going backwards trying to piece together family trees. They said they used between 10 and 15 different family trees to try to figure it all out and eventually honed in on the ones who had ties to Wisconsin and then more work just following the family history and the family research and that got them to Lou Griffin. Okay, and that, that was a several month long process. I think you said nine or 10 months. But Months's let me long. go back to you said they got a hit. So what are they looking for in the first place? Was it there was DNA that was just unexplained from the crime scene, right? And they, that's what they start running through, not the family first. Exactly. And that was they knew that they had when they found Lisa Holstead's body in that marshy area back in 1986. They had obviously her DNA, but they had unidentified DNA. And they assumed, obviously, that's that's someone uh, associated with this crime likely to be their murder suspect. And they had tried putting into in, in putting that DNA into CODIS, which is the national database. Um, anybody who's in prison, jail, sure. things like that. A at this point now, the law says their DNA goes into it, too. But and he was, if you remember from our reports last week, Griffin had been in prison for sexual assault and several other crimes, but it was before Wisconsin's law required that his DNA be entered in that system. So his DNA wasn't in there, and it ends up being that it's his family yeah. members who ultimately led police back to their murder suspect. Fascinating. All right, Sarah, thank you very much for that update. Bill Jarts and Cammy Rapson. This is Action 2 News at 6, your first alert station. These cases are never closed. We never give up. After more than three decades of investigating, we're learning today it's DNA from su the suspect's own family members that ultimately helped Green Bay police solve the 1986 murder of Lisa Holstead. We were first to tell you last week, 65-year-old Lou Archie Griffin is now charged with killing the 22-year-old Holstead, a stranger to him that night. When police announced his arrest, they only told us that DNA from Griffin matched DNA found on Holstead. But we wanted to know just how Griffin became a suspect in the first place after all these years. In a first alert update, Sarah Thompson shows us how police narrowed in on Griffin. You've heard of the ancestry tests. Family members eager to learn their heritage send in their DNA to a lab where their data is eventually entered into a database for millions to access. It's also slowly becoming a new source of information to investigators trying to track down new leads in old unsolved cases. Within the last couple of years, there's been a more talk of this genetic genealogy. It intrigued Green Bay Police Detective Dave Graff, the latest in generations of detectives tasked with finding Lisa Holstead's killer. He sent in a sample of the unidentified DNA police had collected on Holstead's body but had not matched in any national databases. He got a hit, not from a suspect, but from what he now says was the suspect's family. We were able to identify like the person's heritage, where they were from, but also um, using some of the common um, websites on there, we were able to identify some um, relatives. Graf says they weren't close relatives, but it was a start. It's a lot of work um, doing um, the background and, and basically you're doing a family tree in reverse. Over the next several and months, Graf traced 10 to 15 family trees, rewarding. eventually narrowing in on the group tied to Wisconsin. It didn't take long for him to pin Lou Griffin, not only to Green Bay, but to the area where Lisa Holstead had been found. And what brought our attention to Mr. Griffin was his past history. Um, he had just gotten out of prison for sexual assault and had moved up to Green Bay about a month before. Once that put Griffin on their radar, Green Bay police enlisted the help of the FBI, DCI, and Racine County the, uh, Sheriff's Office to spot Griffin at his Racine home and collect a DNA sample by finding beer cans and a cigarette they watched him toss outside. Police say it was a match, but they have collected another DNA sample from Griffin after his arrest to ensure they have the right man. That's always been my main motivation is to get answers for the family. Holstead's family was not at the news conference today, but Chief Andrew Smith read a letter Lisa's mother had penned two months after the murder. It says waiting for confession. Psst, you talking about this horrible person that killed our loving daughter, Lisa Holstead, in Green Bay on August 12th. 
How can you continue to live life every day knowing what you've done? Apparently, you have no conscience. I am really sorry that, uh, that Lisa's mother's not here to see justice served, uh, but I'm sure that she's looking down right now, and I'm sure she's appreciating what she's seeing. Griffin is due back in court later this month. Sarah Thompson, Action 2 News, Green Bay. Thanks, Brad. A Racine County man is headed toward a trial in Green Bay for the 1986 murder of Lisa Holstead. After testimony from the lead detective this morning, a judge determined there's enough evidence for 65-year-old Lou Griffin to go to trial. We first told you back in October that police arrested Griffin 34 years after Holstead was found murdered in Green Bay. Police say DNA connects him to the crime scene, but it took police decades to make that connection. They did three day, decades later because of of science and it is a new and very successful way of tracking down the identity of a person. So what police call forensic genetic genealogy became more of a common term two years ago when investigators in California used it to identify the Golden State Killer. In a first alert investigation, Sarah Thompson found out how California investigators help police in Green Bay and shows us the impact this new technology may have on the future of other cold cases. Just over a year ago, when Green Bay Police Detective Dave Graff was assigned Lisa Holstead's 1986 murder case, he knew he had to try something different to track her killer. Traditional methods had all turned up empty. He had DNA from someone, but it didn't match anyone in CODIS, the FBI-operated DNA database containing more than 3 million profiles, mostly of convicted felons. Graf needed a different pool of DNA profiles. I just found out through the, the media that, you know, these other uh, jurisdictions were, were doing that. That is genetic genealogy, also known as ancestry searching. Graf consulted with another Wisconsin agency who'd worked a case using family tree forensics. That quickly led him to investigators in California who paved the way for this new technology in 2018 when they used it to find serial killer Joseph D'Angelo, responsible for dozens of murders and rapes dating back to 1973. And then they walked me through everything. And they hooked me up with somebody local. So it was just me kind of calling another law enforcement agency saying, what did you do? And then they, they, they put me in contact with the right people. That set Graf on a path of learning genealogy 101 tracing family trees, but backwards, starting with a match to a DNA profile uploaded to websites of third-party companies that anyone can access. Sites like GEDmatch or Family Tree DNA. Is something that is not really being done, to my knowledge, in a crime lab level, but is being done, you know, in um, a public um, company type level. It's thanks to the millions of people suddenly interested in knowing who their ancestors are or those looking for long lost relatives. By submitting their DNA to those sites, it allows anyone, including police, to go searching for a match. I have the exact same access to your information that any other person would. I don't have any specific DNA information about your DNA. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you what hair color you were. I couldn't do anything. Here's the science behind it. The FBI says this DNA research looks at different markers on a DNA strand, not the 20 markers used on DNA in CODIS, the law enforcement database. It results in a much different profile. They've been able to figure out algorithms to say if you share this much you know, DNA with a person, you could potentially be, this is how you could potentially be related to a person. It doesn't give police an instant name and face like on a TV crime show. Graf says it allows him to access potential matches, but even those don't often come with actual names. It's more like a username and then maybe an email address or something. They'll give you some type of contact information and that's all you get. From there, science class is over, and it's back to traditional investigating. Just regular old boots to the ground um, investigative techniques, yes. That's why it could potentially take so long. But in Lisa Holstead's case, it worked, and that is opening the door to using this new technology on other old cases. Oh, absolutely, we look at it to use it for other cases, but you know, it's, it's only applicable in certain situations. 
Just like the case with Lou Griffin, Detective Graff says the ancestry tracing can give multiple possible matches, but equally important is combining that with geographic locations and even age to really narrow in on a possible suspect.